when people experience stress or trauma, either one, trauma in my mind is, you know, some people really want to put it in its own category. And I don't think that's unwarranted. I'm fine with putting it in its own category, but, um, but they, they activate the same physiological pathways. So when somebody is severely stressed or traumatized, or when they are stressed chronically over long periods of time or experience kind of maybe less intense traumas, but again, over time, they just cannot, they can never get up. Um, Every time they get up, somebody knocks them down again and they're just kind of repeatedly traumatized. You know, when it first happens, everybody kind of knows, well, you have this stress response or the fight or flight or freeze response. Well, what is that? What is that? It, It is more than cortisol. It is more than adrenaline. It is actually massive changes in metabolism. And what do I mean by that? I mean, your blood glucose starts going up. Your heart rate is going up. Your blood pressure is going up. Yes, hormones are changing. Inflammation is going up. The immune system is reacting. All sorts of things are happening. And how do I think about that? So the way I the way I think about that is that your metabolism is adapting to try to help you survive. It is giving you the fuel that you are going to need to fight or flee. And that is a metabolic process. Now, when that goes on for prolonged periods of time, we have good evidence that it can result in, you know, some people call it allostasis and an allostatic overload. It's kind of a technical term. The easiest way to think about it is your metabolism, more specifically these tiny things in our cells called mitochondria. We can dive into that if you want, but just think of it as your metabolism, mitochondria get overwhelmed and they actually, because they're they're kind of running on all cylinders trying to help you survive, they begin to they begin to become damaged or dysregulated. And why is that? Because they actually, when they're when it's running on all cylinders, it's kind of like running your car and putting your car in neutral, but then flooring it. And the engine can actually become somewhat damaged or dysregulated as a result of that. If it again, if it's extreme or if it occurs over prolonged periods of time. And once that happens, even if the trauma stops, that dysregulation or damage to mitochondria can persist. And that leaves people vulnerable to both mental health disorders, which ones, pretty much all of them, and metabolic health disorders, which ones, obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, premature mortality. So trauma increases your risk for both mental health and metabolic health disorders. And it's because trauma induces changes to human metabolism. Mitochondria are these tiny things in our cells um, that most people know of as kind of the powerhouse of the cell. And what that means is that they take food and oxygen and convert it into energy. It's in the form of ATP, which is kind of the energy currency of a cell. So that's kind of the high school version of mitochondria, high school biology class. They're powerhouses of the cell. They take food and oxygen and turn it into ATP. There is no doubt that they do that. But in fact, they do so, so much more. Um, There are actually, mitochondria are actually enormously complicated. Um, They, 
were actually foundational to the beginning of multicellular life, <laughs> um, uh, eukaryotic life, um, which is essentially all of the life forms that we can see with our eyes, plants, animals, other things. Any living thing that you can see with your eyes is a multicellular um, living organism, and uh, and its existence really depended on mitochondria at one point or another. So what else do mitochondria do? Mitochondria do so much more. So they actually control the synthesis of stress hormones, cortisol, estrogen, testosterone, other kinds of hormones. They help regulate neurotransmitter production and release and regulation. They help control inflammation, turning it both on and off. They help control the expression of genes from the cell nucleus. So they are epigenetic regulators. I could go on and on with their list of functions. So they do all of these things. And when mitochondria are producing energy, when they are revved up, um, the process by which they make ATP involves the flow of electrons. And um, and these electrons are actually you can think about them kind of like you know like an acidic kind of thing that's kind of if it if it gets out of where it's supposed if it leaks out it it could be a little damaging, and that is exactly what happens when these electrons leak out of the usual process. It it creates what's called reactive oxygen species, and these reactive. ROS and somebody, this is oxidative stress. And this is what all the antioxidants are all the rage for vitamin C, vitamin E, other blueberries. Everybody says, get your antioxidants. Why do you want antioxidants? It's to mitigate this oxidative stress. And, um, and so when mitochondria are being hyper stimulated, in the example of a traumatic or stressful situation, again, if it goes on for a prolonged period of time, it, when it's short-lived, we all the the system is great. The system is highly regulated. It's highly adaptive. It helps us survive. It helps us fight and flee. It helps us do everything we need to do. So I'm not at all dissing the system. The system helps helps us survive. But when it goes on for a prolonged period of time. The mitochondria are just churning, churning, churning. Electrons begin to leak. That creates oxidative stress. And that means that oxidative stress, because they're right there, they're the first kind of victim of high levels of oxidative stress. Um, that that oxidative stress or acid, if you think of it that way, can actually begin to damage the mitochondria themselves. It can also damage other parts of the cell. So high levels of oxidative stress can damage any part of the cell if it gets far enough. But again, because it's being produced right there, mitochondria are most vulnerable to the, that effect. And then if they become damaged, um, then the cell can become dysregulated, if you will, and or the cell can become damaged, if you will, in that insofar as some of its parts, the mitochondria, are now damaged. And this is a term usually called mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, and so I know that's a lot of cell biology, and I know it probably sounds like really pointless, trivial stuff and crap, but just understanding that alone will help us develop better treatments for mental illnesses. All the way from mild anxiety, ADHD, depression, to crippling schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and other disorders. <laughs>